Hello everyone and welcome back. Uh, it's a beautiful day in Scotland, uh, absolutely lovely. It's, it's quite early, it's just gone 10 o'clock, well not early, it's 10 o'clock in the morning and uh, we're all ready to get going now. Uh, we, we stayed here last night, a wonderful spot in the middle of a wood and today we're going to be doing a commission painting on Findhorn. Um, it's a really interesting place, um, quite a lot of history to it there. Um, as I say, this is a commission painting and I really enjoy doing commission paintings. It sort of focuses my mind quite a lot on a particular subject and, and I think really it makes me look a bit harder um, at a subject and trying to find a subject, which is a, a good thing. It's not quite so random and it's a, it's a really interesting challenge to, to do that. Um, I, I say I enjoy commission, uh, commission paintings and portraits. Uh, I used to do a lot of portraiture and um, it, it's, it's a really uh, challenging thing to do. We'll head off now down the road, it's about a five mile drive or so back to Findhorn and really start looking for this scene. Here we go, coming to my garden. So we're at the Findorn Foundation and uh, this, this is a community village, um, eco village really, and it was created in about 1962. And we're here to do a, a painting of the garden here. And this is the original caravan of the founder who, who came here. So I thought this would be quite a nice place, a bit of a historic place. It's quite big now, this, this uh, centre, so there's not much of the original part left, apart from this really. So we'll, we'll try and do a nice little little painting of that amidst the main garden here, the original garden. So I'm all set up now and I've got a composition which I think I like. Um, it's quite a tricky composition really because there's a, there's a lot of green in the picture and also the complexity of it. There's so many plants and flat, flat, well not so much many flowers but um, it, it's quite tricky so uh, I think I've sorted that one out. The, the caravan being the main subject of the picture um, and the trees behind are really nice. A lot of green, but the blue of the sky will help it out as well. So today I've, I've got my new uh, umbrella system sorted out. It's so sunny, so that's, that's protecting the piece of paper from direct light, so I can actually see it, and that's a really handy thing to, to have. Uh, luckily it's not very windy today, so it's not going to blow away. So here's the composition of it and you can see that I've got the caravan on the bottom right hand corner just so that I can include the rest of the garden really and it's quite an expansive garden here so and I've made the focal point of the painting this apple tree here in blossom and then the trees coming up behind so this is the green area and the trees as well but you have the the blue of the sky speckled in which I think would be quite nice. So this is a super complicated picture and um, it's, it's really, really, really quite uh, giving my head a little bit of a scratch on this one because there's so much, there's so much contrast, there's lots of darks and lots of lights. So again, we're going to start at the back, but it's how I do the trees really. And uh, I, th I think I'm going to paint the blue background, the sky, and then the trees over the top of the sky. And it is a bright blue, so a bright cobalt blue. There's no change in, in the blue at all. So I'm going to mix a fair amount up of cobalt blue, really mix it in thoroughly. Um, such a blue sky today, it's amazing weather. So I've got to work out where, I'm not going to put it everywhere because I want the trees to come through as well. So I'm, I'm trying to get that dappled light of light coming through the trees. So let's give it a blast. So I'm trying to leave holes. It's darker at the top, the sky. See the holes I'm trying to leave a little bit off, not too much. There are no, there are no clouds, or oh, one tiny cloud in the distance. Working your way across. 
Definitely not a sky picture today. I do enjoy a sky picture. There's something about them that really make me excited. And then it gets weaker at the bottom. So more water just to weaken out the blue. Faded away. So this is going to be a very interesting painting for me. Um, it's not an open landscape, which I quite like to do. It is a, it's a confined picture. And it's the sort of picture that everyone has access to, really. There's always a garden around. So hopefully it'll be of interest to people who are interested in tackling a garden scene. Yeah. So I'm leaving a few holes in the, in the paper. Because the trees are going to go everywhere as well. Just a few. Okay. Well, that's a start, isn't that? So all of that was done with my number 12 um, professional synthetic sable mop from Windsor & Newton. So I'm going to change to another, another brush now because I'm going to start doing the, the trees. So go back to um, a Raphael round brush. Probably that one. So um, a number, number six. Now think about the trees. Okay, so they are quite dark. They're sort of burnt umber and, and ultramarine blue. So get those two colours going. It's quite warm today, so the, the paint's going to dry off quite quickly. And let's start painting some of them on. So it's, it's, kind of, it's a bit, bit wet still. I don't wait as much as I should when I'm painting out in front of the camera, because it all, all seems to be more, more of a rush. Let it dry a bit. It's amazing how it just sort of travels up these incredibly bendy trees. Change the colour. Really are gnarly trees then. They're not really um, straight at all. Probably quite a windy place in certain winter. Keep going with these trees. Change the colour. So they change, they change from cool to warm in these trees. So sometimes they're cool, sometimes they're the warmer browns, burnt umber. There's lots of little branches coming off. Let's see if we can get those. Gnarly things coming off there. Branches again. You have to be quite bold with watercolour, um, with my style anyway. There are many other styles, and all of them, all of them good, uh, but. You, you, with this sort of impressionistic style, you, you've, you've really got to, especially painting out of doors, you, you, can't, you can't take too long, it's just impossible. They're quite tree-like, aren't they? So more trees coming in here. Change the colour again. Hundreds and thousands of branches everywhere bending in, in all sorts of different directions. So and it's got a sh shadow, so some of them have a light side and a dark side of the branches. Just gonna try and get those in. I'm trying to give a bit of rounding effect, a 3D side to it, so that's quite important. So much. Then I have to get on to doing the um, the leaves 
These are fern trees. Brends off. How about that for complicated? One thing about watercolour and painting in general is that at some point you've got to make a mark. You've got to make a decision. And um, I, sometimes I wonder whether with, with, with good artists, they, they just have a capacity to make more decisions per minute. So when, when, when one, one artist makes a good decision, one, one decision, a really good artist would have made 10 decisions. Let's put a bit of foliage now, green foliage. Brown it down a bit. So I come in flat like that. So I'm only working on this area at the moment. It's complicated enough to, I can't think of anything else at the moment. Any other parts of the painting. Lots of Scots pine in Scotland. And they come off in sort of lumps of green rather than an even green. This one here is quite interesting. Lots of foliage. It's a very much a green painting today, paint, a painting of greens. So try and get the tones. So much. Some of them are quite dark as well. I mean, we want to get a, ver a variety of greens as well. We want to get dark greens, light greens, all sorts of greens. There's so much variation in nature. Hope you can see that I'm trying to apply different types of green. Yeah, that's sort of working, I think. Yes, it is working. There's a very deep green on the, or a very yellowy green on the, on the left here. There's another tree we should try and put in. Maybe this trunk is a little bit broader as well, so I'll introduce a little bit more breadth on this, this, this trunk. Quite substantial trees. And let's try and get a base to these, these greens. So at the bottom part there's a, it seems darker than the top part, so let's try and get some, it's like lumps of, lumps of greeny rather than evenly spread. Now that sort of helps. Yeah, so they have a sort of shape to it. It's like a rock almost, <laughs> these, these trees. Okay, that's pretty good. Yes, that's what, that's what it needed. It's, it's, that, it's, that, it's that they have a shape rather than just a flat color. Right, now I'm gonna introduce the trees on the other side. And these are, oh, I can't remember what they're called now. Um, I think they're silver birch. Sil I think silver birch, what do you think, Tony? Yeah, that's silver birch. Silver birch. Front, yeah, yeah, silver birch. So it's a silver birch tree. So the, 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 the trees are silver. So the trunks are silver. So let's, let's, let's give it a more of a silvery approach. So that's a little cerulean blue. Maybe a bit too much, but it'll be fine. Maybe tap it down a bit. twists into the top. 
interesting. Silver birch is one of my favourite trees. I used to enjoy them as a child, making fires from the from the leaf, from the bark. Good fire lighters. Yeah, I quite like the the blue on that. Again, so many branches, I can't possibly depict them all. Thousands of them, literally thousands. Let me do another one starting there. As you can see, a complicated picture. One, one of the things that Edward, Wes Edward Wesson did is that he uh, he was the ultimate simple painter. He could paint just, just a few washes. It's a very simple scene. Now there are other trees now coming to the right, which are um, more pine. Lots of those trees, so they're just almost like matches. Yeah, that's quite nice. Again, try and get this, try and give the bark a rounded effect. So you need to give it the 3D. So each, each, each bit of wood has a dark and light side. So just try and indicate some of them. Can't do them all, but I can do some of them. Yeah, that's nice. Quite like that. And then this one has a bank on it, a green bank. So I'm going to try and introduce that a bit. Sort of behind, behind the caravan too. So heading into the, the leaves now, a very different type of leaf, much greener leaf. Uh, maybe a bit of yellow in it too. And these are, these are like a speckled effect. So I'm not too sure about how to make those. So that you see, uh, maybe, maybe a few, few of that. See, that's just a speckled approach. So I'm just flicking my brush at it and that would create thousands of little marks, which is what these silver birches are really. Thousands of them. And then round the side they darken off a bit. So I'm going to add a little bit of blue to the mix. So it has a darker side over here it's in the shade. So you see the very different contrasty colours between the uh, pine and the silver birch. And of course the light of the sky coming behind them. So many different greens in this scene. Okay, now we're going to get the the browner greens of the pine. You can see it's a much more complicated process painting these to the trees. You see they're much browner. Oh, that's me splatting everywhere. Viridian. Okay, now to add a few more branches and that should be done. Drying times are much faster in this sort of weather so I tend not to paint a wishy wash, well a, a wet surface too much so it doesn't affect me that much. Okay, I'm there on that. So what I'm going to do now is to head over to the caravan, which is the most important part of the painting, really. Um, that, that tells the story. And 
Yeah, I'm gonna try and go for the roof first. So maybe that's a bit too dark. Maybe a bit of cerulean blue. And then it becomes very light. So almost nothing on the side. So I might add some white paint to that later. And then it curves down here. Not, not much to see on the top of the roof. Okay, then we'll, we'll go down to the side of the building. And I, I think it's more of a, it's a cerulean blue. Cerulean cobalty blue. It's there. It's the side of the, of the caravan. Pretty much it. Quite light. So it's got windows in it as well, which I'll try and indicate a bit later. It's quite sh shiny there. So it's basically a rectangular object. So I'm just trying to keep it very simple to begin with. And then going around the side, it's a little bit of a darker cerulean. So cerulean blue. Maybe a bit of brown on it, just to make it a bit darker. Here we go. Much darker. And then... So this is an important part of the painting, really, so I'm trying to be quite careful with it. Trying to make sure I depict everything. Maybe this needs to fuse together, so I'm softening this edge here so of it going around the corner. So I'm just going to soften. I'm just going to soften this air, this line at the bottom because it sort of goes into the greenery. Really, the, 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 the greenery has sort of absorbed the caravan. Really, and the caravan is quite a historic part of this painting, um, in that the chap who founded the this this village. Um, he lived there for many years with his, with his family. I think it's three children and his wife. So not a very big place to bring up three children. Okay, now I'm gonna try and emphasize the top of the caravan by having it darker here. So trying to bring it out. So contrast is the way you bring something out. You can see with that with that line there, it's brought the whole thing out. So you have to remember that if you want to emphasize something, put something dark next to it or put something light next to it. Yeah, that's worked. And you see how I've softened that line because I'm going to be introducing all sorts of um, foliage and trees that are sort of overgrowing it now. Okay, I'll let that dry a bit. Yeah. Okay, I'm grabbing my little brush now, my Cass Art brush, which is I bought recently, a number three brush, and this just gives a little bit of detail in it. So you can see it's um, trying to get a few bits and pieces in there just to hint at, at what's going on. Not too much of it because that would be, I don't, you, you, it's a ter terrible balancing act between detail and too much detail. And I'm always erring under the safety side of lacking detail so that everything's in context. Keep it. So maybe it's just cerulean blue in fact. So I'm not trying to get black, black lines. Then, Anybody can tell it's really starting to bring it out. Can't really see the back of it much. And the windows coming in. The shutters. A little bit darker. And then this 
line going. So this is the focal theme, so maybe a little bit more detail, but not too much. You've got to be so careful of detail within this style. Really don't want to do too much. quite sort of dirty on the top so I'm, I'm trying to make it look a bit sort of rough and ready and a bit of moss that's on this front section so changing it to a yellower color so raw sienna just to give it a sense that there's moss on the on the roof which there is lots of it speckling few windows. Spending a bit more time than, than on anything else than this because um, it, it's the important feature of the, of the whole painting. A few windows. So it's very, it's very much, a, if you like painting cars, you'd, you'd probably like this, this part of it. See, that looks, like, that looks like it, but without the detail of it. And then there's a ladder, which is in brown, going up the side, which I'll include. I think it's quite an interesting feature of it. And there's a yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> okay, so that's that's good enough for that now, and um, I'm going to work down into the greenhouse now. Um, so I think that's an important part because it is a garden after all. So let's try and get that in. It's it's really. Uh, looking at it, it's, it's, it is, it's a bit of blue on the top of the roof, That's, that is the reflected light. So let's start that. That's about the right colour. It's a bluey green on the top. So there, it will have all these, which I might add with a bit of white paint later. So that there's the top ridge. So again, if you want something to be seen better, just place something dark, that's light, just place something dark next to it. Again, dark a bit here. So just trying to do the front of the greenhouse now, which is a little change of colour, make it a little bit yellower. Down to here. So just try and make it a bit yellow. Come and have a look, John. Okay, just carrying on with the greenhouse a bit. So, go back to my little brush again, um, because I'm trying to get the detail in there. Oh, not that brush, that brush. So I'm gonna put the um, little details of the framework in. Quite a few people visiting the garden today. So a few chats here and there. The photography is a little bit different today because because it's so sunny Tanya is very limited where she can actually stand uh, we're, we're sort of hiding under this umbrella and if we didn't have the umbrella you couldn't see anything it's so bright just trying to make it look like a, a greenhouse nothing more than that framework of it. Probably enough? It's probably enough. A few pots, in, let's do a few pots inside just to give a hint of a few pots anyway. Geraniums are they? 
Oh yeah, they are geraniums. Just a few something, just a hint. Don't want to overdo things. One thing about overdoing is you you you'll, you'll have a problem if you start if you start to put too much detail in. Then where do you stop? And you never finish anything. Right, I'm going to leave that now and work on to the next bit. So the next thing I'm going to tackle is going to be the apple blossoms, the apple tree. So that's really complicated. It's, the, the detail in it is infinite. So you, you, I don't want to try that because I don't want to be infinitely here. Uh, I just want to hint it in, a, in an interesting way. So I'm trying to work out how to do it. So I'm trying to leave the paper uh, for the flowers. So I'm going to do the green of it first. So but I'm, I, want to, I want to have a lot of, if I can, the, the sort of paper shine, not that's worked particularly well, but trying to, trying to get some of the paper shining through a bit of it. And then the, there's a huge amount of greenery in this painting. So a little bit of raw sienna and hooker's green. So I'm back to my mop, my, is it my, my um, Winsor Newton mop, 13 millimeter. And I'm going to start putting in some of the greens. And it's very important to try and vary these greens. I don't want to paint one green. That would be not good. There are so many different types of green. I'm going to try and see if you can see that. So I'm trying, trying to vary it. There's a lot of greens. So there's a viridian green there now. Trying to give variety. So this is the first wash of green. Okay, we just do this one side initially. There's a pathway there, that's why I say one side, so that's not, not over the path. So that's my first wash of that. So um, I'm going to go into the top of the apple tree now and I can't do it to the base because it's soaking wet so I'm going to leave that to dry but this, is, this isn't as, dry, as wet so a few, of the, a few of the branches maybe and, and, and sort of little nooks of the apple tree. Some cerulean blue a bit, change the colour, lots of little, little marks. It's a fantastic subject and Van Gogh did these apple trees and blossom trees a lot and he did it in oil which is a very different medium uh, in some ways a bit easier to do than watercolour because he could put great big blobs of colour on it which, which would be lo which were lovely. I can't do that. Okay now I'm going to start working into the change the brush again to a slightly thicker number four and we're going to work on here now so Bit of burnt umber and ultramarine blue. Trying to get this. It's a gnarly sort of plant. Plant. It's, it's really, really gnarly. That's the best word of it. The bark is very rough. So I'm trying to try and indicate something like that. Go up in here, and it sort of speckles through, which I'll try and give the, on the grass. Another bit up here, and it sort of varies from blue and brown really. Slightly over the caravan. I've actually moved it slightly left so I can see the caravan a bit more. Didn't want to um, completely hide the caravan. It's such an important feature of the painting. So there'll be quite a lot of white paint at the end of this picture to try and depict the blossom and the leaves. A few more of the branches. Amazing how it just bends and it, there's no, no, nothing straighter and none of the trees are straight around here. Change the colour a bit. Yeah, that's quite nice. See, so I've got the bit of change of colour in there and it's, it's, it's moving around a bit. It's 
very dark at the bottom. Let's try and get it almost black at the bottom. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, the next step is to do a little bit of the shadow. So a little bit of a bigger brush. Number six, Raphael. And I'm going to paint the shadow, which as you know, if you might remember, it is, it is a green color, but I'm gonna paint it in a more blue color. So maybe a little bit of ultramarine blue and all sorts. Just trying to get that blueness coming in. Very this, just sometimes a little, little bit flat. Just you can change the shape of the brush by the angle in which you you pit it. So if you want a detail part, it's more vertical, and want a, a bigger wash, it's more horizontal. It comes all the way down here. Maybe. Yeah, just so it gives a sense that there's a, a shadow, the light coming from the left, and there's also a shadow. Foliage here. Lots of shadows. And then on the nearer side, there's a bit of a shadow here. Lots of plants. So again, I always depict shadows of blue, and I think it's more importantly than normal to depict it blue here, otherwise it's just green. And I don't want to paint too much green that's a bit too much for the eye to cope with. Shadow, the sort of pathway goes down there as well. So just trying to give in lots of sort of leaf shapes. Shadows of leaves. I think it's quite effective. A, it's a sort of overgrown area in there as well. There's a lot of, a lot of um, plants going around the, which I want to include, but I don't, I don't want to overdo that. So side of the brush really, just trying to indicate some of the, some of the trees, some of the, sort of the, the fine foliage. There's a million different shades in this picture, and that's its problem. Going to try and tackle the tree a bit more now, and it, it, it has this amazing speckledy effect, and of the tiny leaves that are coming in. So as it's, as it's the, the main feature of it, I'm going to try and depict a few of here, in here. Trying to, and, and, and sometimes it just has a plain colour, sort of at the core of it, a sort of darkness that's coming through. It's not all, it's not all speckledy. You have to sort of blur your eyes a bit and and try and see what's going on. all sorts going on in these complicated, complicated subjects. There's a redder tree behind as well, so maybe just a bit of red here. That's helped it. Is it a rhododendron? Yeah, it is a rhododendron, right at the back. So that sort of brings that, these shapes in. So it's layers and layers and layers of different different plants. And then there's some different, some reds here. Always love the change of color. So if, you, if I can find these different colors, like there, that's really good. Here, so there's lots of changes. Maybe some different types of green. Again, if you, if, you, if you try and depict it in reality, the painting would never end. And it wouldn't necessarily be any better. You just had more complication. <laughs> so you see just a few changes of, changes of green here. Okay, that's all right. So what I'm going to try and do now, whilst, whilst that lower part's drying, is the soup front branches of the apple tree. I can't go too low because it's soaking wet. So um, a thinner, smaller, number four now, brush of 
of the Raphael. So let's try and maybe that's a bit too dark. Actually, I'm going to change my brush back to that. So after that, I'm going to move on to the pathway now. And you can really see how complicated these subjects are. I don't normally, um, I'm much quicker normally, but sometimes the subject matter can make you uh, be a bit slower. So this, this pathway is going to have a little blue tone to it. So a little bit of maybe ultramarine, uh, ultramarine blue, I think, rather than cobalt. So cobalt blue there. A bit of red too. It's, it's, a, it's a bit of alizé and crimson maybe. Burnt sienna, just testing it really. So there's all sorts of different colours to choose from there. Now I'm going to try and pick the best one. So maybe there. That's good. So you can see it's a brownie, reddy colour. That's the pathway into it. And it has um, lots of stone. It's a stone, a little pebble pathway. Okay. Now I'm going to get my bigger, bigger brush again, and we're going to tackle the uh, the, the foliage on the left. So back to my big mop. Complicated. Okay. Always trying to change the colour of it. Brighter and darker in places. So the first the first wash, just to get it down. Then I alter it. A bit more viridian in places. Okay, first first wash down. Okay, I'm going to go into the shadowy area. So there are some quite dark shadows of the plants going onto the path, which I quite enjoy. So do those in blue. We need to get that contrast going. So we need to vary, get rid, we need to try and get rid of a lot of that green if we can. So just indicating like shadows. Yeah, then there's a path we're going up here, which is quite shadowy. Again, we'll try and do that in a bit of blue, bluey brown. That goes up to here. You can't see the paths because they're, they're a little bit sunken. And then there are sort of patches of darker elements here, see? So all, all I can really do with this sort of subject is is, is a value study. So I'm squinting my eyes and then picking out darker shades and lighter shades. That's all I can do. Okay, now we're going to have a bigger shadow. Right there. So these are lots of, they've got the fence this side, which is casting a shadow. And the trees also. Patches. Complicated. Yeah, that's fine. And now I'll go into the distance. There's a sort of bluey gray color. A bit of red, I think. In this area here, there's a fence. Maybe a few more different different greens in the in the lower right, lower left. So many, I can't possibly record them all. 
few flowers on this side too, which I'll put late, in later on. A few yellows and lilacs. So I'm going to tackle the shed now, and it's a bluey mauvey colour, so a little bit of Elizarian crimson, just to move it up a bit. And it's Elizarian crimson. You see, it just slightly mauves it. It's quite dark as well, so a bit of brown too. So let's have a go at that. Pretty much there. So, as you, what, what I'm trying to to impart to you really is, is the fact that this is really a value painting more than anything else. It's about picking values. I mean the front section, which I'll blue off a bit more just to give it a sense that it is a different plane. And there as well. Okay, and it's got a brown roof, moss roof. So I can put a little something in there like that. That's the basis of it work quite well and it's just a question of letting that dry a bit now. So a simple plain value study. So I've got this white area here which I need to cover somehow so it's, it is darker. Try and create the edge. Because it was, let's go in here a bit. So and the darkness underneath the tree. So I'm coming on to the finishing run now of the painting and, and just trying to get a few more of the values in. Les values, as they, very much a French word. It's not that I'm good at French. Okay, just going to pick out a few of the bits of the, of the shed now, and maybe a bit too soon in this. It might not be quite dry enough. No, it's not dry enough yet, so, okay, I'll go somewhere else. No, it's not dry enough. Right, I'm going to draw in or paint in some of the fence posts now. And they're quite a good feature of this place. It gives, this fence gives a sense of leading into the picture. So it's quite an important part of the composition. And it tells a story and you're always wanting to tell a story. The handmade fences, which adds to them. change the colour. They're quite blue as well, so a little bit of cerulean blue as well on some of them. It's interesting when wood ages in the sun, it does turn blue. More cerulean. Lots of these little... They've managed to do a curved fence, which is quite fun. Create a bit of shadow. Everything has a shadow, everything has a, a light and a dark to it. Everything has values. Now I'll move back to the shed for a few bits and bits of detail. Just a few touches of detail, just don't overdo it. That's enough. So we're coming to the end of it now and it's just the little details. I've squeezed my white paint out and so that's, that's, that's a real sign that I'm moving on. And it's really a question of doing the, um, um, the blossom. So, so they're slightly reddish in colour, so I'm a bit, bung a bit of red there. And see what we can do. So we, we need to get this sense that there's white blossom everywhere. So trying to get 
relatively thick paint on it. Try and get a sense of the blossom. And maybe it needs a bit of darkness behind it just to bring that out, so I'll pop that on quickly. So let's get, let's get a little bit of contrast in it going. You need, you need the contrast to bring things out. If you don't have the contrast, then you, white doesn't seem white. If it's next to another white, it's not going to seem white. Yes, that's much better. Sometimes you only really appreciate how to do something when, you, when you're faced with it. It takes a little time to work it out. Very speckledy. So we'll let that dry. And we'll head otherwhere to another place. So some yellow, so lots of yellow flowers. Years ago, this this um, this garden used to be more of a um, vegetable garden, and that's how people remember it. But and it's not anymore. It's, it's it really is. I would say a flower garden. <laughs> There's a bit of yellow and white, with my small cass art number three. Just a few hints here. Do you want to overdo it? A bit of red, a bit of bright yellow next to some of these other spots. Yeah, that's helped it, I think. Made it a bit more lively. Yeah. Again, we do the same to the other side. Bright reds. And the cobalt violets. It's really an excuse to go mad on colour. It's unified the two sides of the of the grass of the uh, plants. So still carrying on, putting the little bits of detail in, trying to get the foliage to look more natural. Look like there's a bit of colour in there. Um, capt capturing these highlights, which is so important. So you've got the highlights of the these um, fences here. Highlight the, these, these to make things look 3D, which is what the whole trick of this, this watercolour business is all about, but without going through endless detail. Um, and then we go down to the greenhouse, a few white bits here. Trying to get the, the louvers in. It's amazing what white paint does. Not much I can do to the to the roof really. That's that's going to stay as it is. Maybe a few touches of white around the windows. Like that. Next, last thing, almost the last thing to do is the sort of whites of the of the blossom tree. Quite thickish white paint as well. It's got to stand out. Let's give it a hint of them, really. I'm trying to make them contrast with those dark bits I've got. Dabbing around. They are stunning. Maybe a little bit of a redder one as well. It's pink. So I'm going to give the, um, the caravan a little bit of a darker edge to it, just to try and bring it out a bit more, just to see, make it brighter, that roof a bit brighter. It is quite sunny today, so I need to figure out a way of making it look like it's um, really, really pinging out. I think it did then. See that? Much brighter. Right, so here's the painting pretty much done now, and it's just a few uh, pencil marks to, to bring things out a bit more. So um, I, I find the pencil marks, uh, and this sort of scene quite handy really, because it's such a complicated thing, and I think the pencil marks will, will bring it out. Just to provide that little bit of detail with it. This background I think is quite important, just to try and get a few more of these sort of web of branches that came in. It's a bit of a tricky, tricky one for Tanya to film with it being under the umbrella. She's slightly stooped, 
so that's not been easy for her. Hurting her back a bit. It's all worth it for the art though, isn't it, Tonya? It sure is. So just a few marks. Yeah, give it a few hints of this bush coming in. Okay, that's it. Okay, just gonna check to see whether that's dry, which seems to be, so it's just a question of signing it now. So bottom left-hand corner is the easiest one. Right, so James Potter. There we go. So here's the finished painting and I'm pleased with it. I, I, thought, I thought the most important part of this painting was the composition of it because I wanted to create a, a scene of the garden rather than just a close-up of one particular part and to try and tell a story as well and to, to re make you realise that it, it was a garden and the bit of history of the, of the um, caravan there was quite interesting too. So yeah, it's, it's, it's been a very interesting picture. It's been a pleasure to do. Uh, Tanya's worked hard behind the camera there as well and uh, I hope you like it too. Anyway, if you can give me a thumbs up that'd be great and subscribe, even better. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks very much. Bye bye.